Hello friends, welcome back. Today we're going to use dynamic scales. Uh, the D3 min and max methods are useful to help set the scale. Given a complex data set, one priority is to set the scale so that visualization fits the SVG containers width and height. You want all the data plotted inside the SVG canvas so it's visible on the web page. The example below sets the x-axis scale for the scatter plot data. The domain method passes information to the scale about the raw data value, uh, values for the plot. The range method gives it information about the actual space on the web page for the visualization. In this example, the domain goes from zero to the maximum in the set. It uses the max method to, with a callback function based on the x values in the array. The range uses the SVG canvases width, but it includes some padding too. This puts space between the scatter plots, uh, dots, and the edge of the SVG canvas. So here we have a data set with what looks like X and Y parameters. Um, and then we have a constant of a width and a height of 500. So these are just, I think they're padding elements. Yeah, width and height padding. Padding between the SVG canvas boundary and the plot. So, oh, this is our padding. Okay, and so our constant is, this x scale is equal to scale linear. So here, this is where we set up the scale, and now we're setting the domain. Within the domain, we're setting, we've got a, um, an array, and we start in this array, our first position at position zero. So our domain starts at zero, and then our next one, this is simply a function that says, what is the max of the data set points, these data set points, at position zero. So they're saying 34, 109, 310, 79, etc. And then the range is equal to the padding, which is 30. And then we're also adding um, the width minus the padding. So the padding is the padding on the outside, but we want to make sure that the width, which is the width of our SVG container, we're saying that minus 500. And so we're here, we're going to start at 30 and we're going to end at 470 because 500 minus 30 is 470. The padding may be confusing at first. Picture the x-axis on this horizontal line from 0 to 500, the width of the value for the SVG canvas. Include the padding in the range method forces the plot to start at 30 along the line instead of 0 and end at 470 instead of 500. Okay, so use the y scale variable to create a linear x, linear y-axis scale. The domain should start at zero and go to the maximum y value. So this is the x values here. These are, these are the y values here. The range should use the SVG height and include the padding. So the range should use the SVG height and include the padding. Remember to keep the plot right side up when you set your range and your coordinates. Okay, cool. So let's go down here. I'm just gonna stretch this out so it's easier to read. So here we're setting our scale. Uh, the padding between the SVG elements will be 30. So this is the same as the previous example. And so we want to set, uh, create an X and Y scale. Uh, we've got our domain set here, d3.max. So we're already setting the domain. Um, and then with the range, oh, it looks like it's already there. Add your code below this line, the Y scale. Okay, so with y scale, we're going to say uh, d3 scale linear. So we're setting up a scale uh, object, and we're going to set the domain. And um, let's see, y scale variable create a linear y scale. The domain should start at zero. Okay, so the domain's at zero. We're going to pass in an array, or an array with two points in it. Right, the first point zero. So this one starts at zero as well. And then the next point is whatever the max of the data set at position one is. And so what we're, we're gonna probably do here, uh, domain should be zero and the maximum Y value in the set. So here we're gonna just say, what's the next value? We wanna pass it within the array. And we're going to say, we're gonna, go, we're gonna use D3, the max function, and then we're gonna use the data set. And within that data set, well, Data set. So we pass in the data set, and then the next element that we're passing in is going to be a function. And I'm going to do it in vanilla JavaScript first, and then we'll refactor later. And then within there, we're going to go from the D. And then we're going to return whatever the D at position Y, which is position 1, right? 
So position, so the, we're going through, uh, yeah, and here I'm just going to console log this um, D. So here you'll see that we're get going through, and with each iteration we're going through and we're grabbing each one of these. So 34, 78, 109, 310, blah, blah, blah. Now if we go D at position zero, that's how we're getting the X axis. This is how we're getting the X point. So what we wanna do is make this D at position one. And you'll see that that gives us the thing. And then obviously the, the, the D3.max function is just simply iterating through this and finding our max one, which looks to me like it's gonna be 411. So we're gonna return 411. That should be what happens in this. So we can get rid of this console log now that we see what's happening. Um, the range should use the SVG height and include the padding. Okay, cool. So we've got that guy going. So now we can say, we can get rid of this uh, semicolon here and we're gonna do another dot. So we're doing domain and now we're gonna do range. So the range is equal to uh, an array with two values in it, right? And uh, this is gonna be the last one, so we can put the period here. Um, we, the range should use the SVG height and include padding. Okay, so, well, really we wanna start at zero, but we wanna add the padding, right? And the padding is 30. Okay, so that's gonna be where we start, oops. That's where we start our guy. And then our next value will be equal to the, um, height minus the padding, right? So H, because the height of our SVG is gonna be 500 and we want it to be minus 30. So H minus 30. And that makes it 470. Um, now saying zero plus padding is not necessary, right? So we can just get rid of that and we'll still get the right answer. Oh wait, before I start refactoring, I'm just gonna run the tests. The text H2 should be 30. Hmm, I wonder if I've got these backwards. The range of your Y scale should be equivalent 470 by 30. Oh, okay, so I've got these backwards. Interesting, hmm. So yeah, the way that I was able to tell that is I just say, okay, well, then I know that I need these results and 470 is equal to the height minus 30. But instead of saying minus 30, I should be saying minus padding. Because I want it to be dynamic. If the padding changes, I want the SVG to change. So if we run the test, that passes. Okay, cool. Well, we know padding doesn't need to be zero. Um, saying at zero is ridiculous, or uh, zero minus whatever, you're always just gonna get the same thing. So our height minus padding, and then padding. And then, so for here, you know, we can make this a ES6 function by adding this, making this an arrow function. Uh, if we run the code, to, you can see that that passes. Uh, the cool thing about arrow functions is they can have implicit returns. So if we get rid of this and we get rid of the return statement and put it all on one line and we run the tests, we'll see that's the exact same thing. So we might as well just do it this way. And um, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, once you're done with this, you don't need to have the comments there because it's not necessary. And uh, there you go. I think that that would be kind of like the cleanest answer. It's cool that this, this one matches this one. So you can see that they're doing very similar things. It kind of makes it easy to read. Um, and yeah, usually I'd like to keep, you know, I like to keep the co code looking really clean by lining up all the dots when you're doing these chain methods. Um, so yeah, that's the answer for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed this one and uh, we'll see you in the next one.